Hey guys, what's up? This is such a highly requested video, so I'm finally making it. Today, we're going to talk about a program that I did in high school, hosted by the New York Academy of Sciences. This is a fully online, international extracurricular, perfect for anyone interested in STEM. You get to team up with extremely talented high school students from across the world and come together to create solutions to global challenges. And you get the chance to win some really prestigious international awards. In best of all, it's absolutely free if you get accepted. So in this video, I'm going to break down what the program is, why I did it and why you should, and finally, the entire application process. Let's get into it. First of all, what is this program? Every year, the New York Academy of Sciences brings together 1,000 students from across the world. This gives the program about a 10% acceptance rate, which means it is pretty difficult to get into. They then bring these 1,000 talented students from across the world together on their online platform called Launchpad. Twice a year, students will form teams of six and come together to create solutions for these global challenges that the academy picks out for you. Each team also gets mentored by someone who is extremely accomplished in the field of STEM. The two winning teams in every challenge get a $500 cash prize plus an all-expense paid trip to the Global STEM Alliance Summit in New York. Now, winning an international award and getting a free trip sounds absolutely amazing, but even if you don't win, there are some really wonderful benefits to just participating in this program. The first is that being a team leader among a team of six shows great initiative and leadership skills, which a lot of students' applications sorely lack. I also know so many people who came up with a great idea over the course of these challenges and then took it outside the academy and turned it into an amazing startup or an amazing nonprofit. But in my opinion, the biggest advantage of all is that you get to connect with really talented high school students from across the world. For example, when I wanted to form my global art community to make art videos during the lockdown, this is the platform I went to to find other students from different countries who could help me out. And we ended up creating something that had a really large audience. And finally, you get access to a free bootcamp that teaches you a lot about research and critical thinking from the best instructors in the world. So if you're looking to get involved in research even outside this program, this is a great starting point for you. And now let's get into the most important part, which I know you all are here for. The application process. How did I get in? How do you beat this 10% acceptance rate? So you'll be surprised to know that the application does not ask you for grades of any kind. They don't care about your school marks. All they want is a genuine passion for and interest in STEM subjects. There are two parts to the application, extracurriculars and essays. For extracurriculars, they ask that you tell them a little bit about four to five activities you've done, whether they're related to science or not. They don't expect you to have achieved a lot already. This program is all about being that launch pad that lets you achieve your full potential in STEM. But they do want to see five qualities. Teamwork, because you're going to be working with a team. Creativity, because you want to come up with really creative solutions. A passion for STEM, because after all, this is a science program. Initiative, because they want you to be actively contributing ideas to your team. And finally, problem solving or critical thinking skills. Make sure that whatever activity you put in your application is explicitly linked to one of these five categories, so it directly shows them why you're a good fit for this program. For example, I talked about teaching art in my community. I said that one, art has given me a bit of a creative flair, which will help me come up with new and unique solutions to the challenges that the academy sets. Two, teaching art has given me the ability to work with a lot of different people who I don't necessarily know from before. Think about anything that you've done, whether that's sports, student council, art, dance, music, volunteering, whatever you've done, I bet you can put it into one of these five categories and make sure you explicitly tell them how this will help you succeed in the program. Now coming to the second part of the application process. They ask you for five essays with a word count of 500 words each. My approach with this is to look at all five questions and jot down some bullet points of things that set you apart. What do you have that will make you succeed in this program? And then once you have a draft of those bullet points, convert that into your essay. So let me share my essays with you. Fair warning, I wrote these almost two years ago. They're a little bit cringe, but it's fine. So the first question they ask is, why do you want to participate in the New York Academy of Sciences? And why do you think you're a good fit for this program? For this question, my advice is, everyone is going to write the same reasons. You want the chance to win an award. You want to work with people from all over the world. You want to solve challenges. If everyone writes the same reasons, there's not really much of a point. 
so connect them back to your own experiences. Say that I've worked with a team before and I find that it's a lot better than working on your own because you can share perspectives and ideas. And because of this experience, I now want to work with a team from across the world and try and learn from them and come together to build something that's actually impactful. If you want to say this program will give me the chance to learn from a very experienced mentor. So for example, you can say, I took this online course and I learned this. And this is how I applied it to the real world. And it was extremely beneficial to my personal growth. Therefore, this is the reason that I want to learn from an experienced mentor so that I can take these skills and apply them somewhere else. Make sure that all of your reasons for wanting to engage in this program come from a personal experience or a personal interest that only you can have. And then for why are you a good fit for this program? Again, remember the five pointers that I talked about earlier. For example, my experiences were art, reading, and model imaginations, which are all non-STEM activities. Because I didn't have anything like the robotics club at the time, I didn't really have a lot of coding experience either. So I stuck with these non-STEM activities, but again, connect them back to one of the five pointers and explicitly say why this pointer will help you in the program. The second question that they ask about is what is the global challenge that you'd like to solve and why? Now for this, two things that I want you to remember. One, pick something with a little bit of personal experience in it. If you can tell a story about that problem, that will automatically make the readers feel a little more connected to your essay. For example, I talked about air pollution and I started with a personal anecdote about how I've witnessed the air quality in my city getting worse and worse and worse. Just that imagery draws the reader in and makes them feel like you really care about the problem. And then second, talk a little bit about what you've already done to solve it, or at least talk about some ideas you have to solve the problem. You can't just give them a problem and say, I want to solve this. Show them that you really want to solve it by telling them what you've already done or exactly ideas for what you want to do. So for example, if you've done some kind of tree planting event, talk about that. Say that I've already taken this small step towards solving this problem, but through the academy, I want to learn skills that will give me a much larger platform to actually make a larger impact on this problem. The third question is, talk about a time that you worked with a team and what challenges did you face? I talked about model United Nations and organizing a national M1 conference in my old school. This is a fairly straightforward question, but the way I tried to make it unique was that instead of just talking about these are the official roles we had in the team, I talked about unofficial roles. I talked about my personality as a team member. I think that really set my essay apart from everyone who just talked about this was the role that I did, I did it very effectively, I was very good at managing my time, etc, etc. But I really talked about the friendship that we developed through that team and I think the New York Academy of Sciences really encourages that. They encourage you to make connections within the academy that continue even beyond the program. They really want to provide a platform for students interested in STEM to come together and, in, and interact with each other. And I think if you can show them that for you, working in a team is not just about getting the job done, but it's also about forming meaningful connections with the people in your team, that will really make you stand out. The fourth question is, how will you make time for this program? Because it requires three to four hours per week. And it's flexible, right? Because it's online, so it's not too tricky of a question make sure you give them a very specific answer. So for example, I said that I teach art in my community, but starting next month, I'm planning to take fewer students, so that cuts down my time. And I said that I'm going to be done with the SAT in a few weeks. And so that leaves me a lot of free time that I was using to study, and I can put that towards the academy. We all have only 24 hours in the day. So either you can tell them that you've been wasting a lot of time and you're now going to use that wasted time towards the junior academy, which I wouldn't recommend saying that, or just talk about something that you're going to cut down on to make time for this junior academy. Because no one wants to have a teammate who just won't get the work done on time because they're too busy. And finally, they ask you to tell them about a time when you faced either an academic or a personal challenge and how you overcame it. This was the most difficult essay for me to write. I started off with a personal challenge, but then I realized that actually none of this relates to anything that I'll be doing in the program. So I completely scrapped that essay and decided to talk about something that happened at school instead. I talked about a time when I took on a really challenging project with an internal assessment and I struggled to finish it. But through hard work and determination, I finally managed to create something that I was really proud of. My essay about my personal challenge didn't really show anything very specific about me. It was just 
I faced a challenge and I overcame it. But this new essay actually showed that I was willing to take the initiative to take up a really challenging school project, even though I knew that it would be difficult and it would take hours and hours of work. Make sure that whatever you write shows you in a positive light and makes them want to accept you. I hope this video about applying to the New York Academy of Sciences helped you all out. If you're new here, hi, I'm an international student from India studying computer science and philosophy at an Ivy League university. And I would love for you to hit the subscribe button below because every week we talk about being a student, study tips, time management, college applications, and more. If you enjoyed this video, I would love for you to give it a thumbs up and comment any questions that you have below. Thank you for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you very soon with a brand new video.